Emotional eating, food and emotions. Tell me what you eat and I will tell you what psychological problems you have. People are addicted to different foods. Some people are addicted to chocolate, others are addicted to chips, some are addicted to nuts. Although nuts are considered to be a healthy snack, those people can eat lots of them and get more calories than they need. Today we will find the connection between the food we eat and our emotions. Analyzing the food that we like can help us to identify the emotions that we are trying to suppress. Food helps us to manage our emotions. Depending on the type of food, sweets, french fries, chips, salty food uh, or crispy food, you can learn different things about yourself. The goal of today's webinar is to teach you how to understand your eating behavior and why you eat more than you need. Today we will talk about cakes, burgers, chicken wings, nuts, chips, chocolates, mostly unhealthy food. And we will discuss how this type of food is related to our emotions. We're going to talk about anger, loneliness, sadness, boredom, hidden aggression, lack of love, anxiety, and positive emotions such as joy and excitement. Hi guys, my name is Elena Semenek and this is my YouTube channel Psychology of Happiness. Uh, on this channel I teach you about happiness, about money, about health, about food, about self-esteem. I teach you how to become happier and more successful in life. If you'd like uh, this channel, if you'd like today's topic, please give me thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also below uh, the video you can find links to my Facebook and to my Instagram account. Every week I release new videos here on uh, YouTube and share them on my other social networks. Please join me. Uh, so if you want to be happy, if you want to be healthy and successful in life, then click the notification bell and subscribe to my channel. So this way you won't miss any of my future videos. Let's move on and start today's webinar. Emotional eating, tell me what you eat and I tell you what psychological problems you have. The law of life is to move forward. To move means to be active. Research shows that active people tend to stay active. While watching this webinar, I want you to practice staying active by writing your comments and questions as you watch. If you are having troubles expressing your thoughts, try to use emojis. Practice connecting with your emotions right now, right here, while you're watching this video. As you know, excess weight is associated with metabolism. The main purpose of metabolism is to convert or transform food to energy. Our emotions work the same way. When we receive information of any kind, we have some type of emotional reaction to that information. It can be sudden or it can be strong. If we don't express our emotions, if we don't reflect on our emotions, then we suppress them with food. People who cannot express their feelings, who do not talk about their emotions, within time are more likely to develop an eating addiction. Have you heard about psychosomatic disorder or psychosomatic illness? Psychosomatic medicine is a field of psychology that studies our relationships between psychological and behavioral factors that affect our physical body. To put it simple, uh, psychosomatic medicine deals with how our daily problems affect our health. People who do not address their psychological aspects of their life often develop physical ailments, high blood pressure, knee problems, diabetes, all types of eating disorder, heart problems, etc. Therefore, let's practice right now. Let's learn how to increase our emotional metabolism. Let's connect and identify our emotions, our reactions, and most importantly, instead of suppressing them with food, let's release them. So I encourage you to write about your feelings and emotions in the chat along with this webinar. Ask your questions, post your comments, share your emotions, use emojis. The first question to you, where are you watching me from? What is your city and country?
The second question, why do you want to lose weight? Have you tried to lose weight before? And what result were you able to achieve? Please write the answers to those questions in the comment section of this video. Today I will teach you how being aware of what you eat can help you to identify which emotions or feelings or psychological problems you're trying to suppress. So let's talk more about emotional eating. Our emotions and feelings make our life brighter, more diverse and more interesting. When a person has trouble feeling emotions or constantly experience depression, he can feel like he does not want to live. He does not see the reason for living. In order for us to feel that we are alive, we have to connect with our emotions. They can be bad or good, but they should be vivid. Uh, example, couples can fight all the time and get on each other's nerves, but still be together. Uh, this happens because those fights make them feel something. They have to fight to defend their opinions. They have to fight to get what they want. Often those partners can say that this is their style of communication. They are not fighting. This is just the way they talk. People come to my private session saying that they want to feel more fun and joy in their life. They often say that something is missing in their life. Elderly people can die earlier because of the feelings of loneliness. They may have a lack of motivation in their life. Uh, they may have lost many people close to them. Extreme boredom can actually cause us physical harm. I believe that my grandmother would have lived longer if she had hobbies, interests, or good friends. Food also gives us energy. Food also brings us a vast variety of emotions because of the diverse combinations of flavor. We are affected differently by different foods. When we eat sour food, our lips pucker. When we eat spicy food, we feel a warm sensation inside. When we eat fatty foods or sweets, we smile because we feel joy. One dish can combine several flavors simultaneously. Our brain gets excited by those combinations. For example, ice cream is cold and sweet. We can also add fruits, nuts and chocolates into it and overwhelm our brain with pleasure. Another example is Thai food. It has a variety of spices and flavors. A third example is cheeseburger. Soft buns, juicy meat, fresh tomatoes, melted cheese, ketchup or mayo, and crunchy pickles on the side. Just think about how many flavors can exist in just one bite of a burger. Let's add french fries, glass of wine, and a nice atmosphere at home or in a bar, music, or a movie on TV. You can't possibly feel sad or lonely when we have all those components. You are content while you are chewing your burger. When we finish eating, our real emotions returns and we reach for the bag of chips or a beer so we can suppress them again. Food is an excellent substitute for our emotions. There are three types of people. First, those who simply don't feel much emotions in their life. They might develop eating addictions because through food they fulfill what's missing. Second group, those who have lots of emotions. Their life looks like a roller coaster of emotions, but they don't know how to regulate them. Because they're overwhelmed with emotions and don't know how to deal with their feelings, they have to suppress them with food. They eat because food helps them to relax and shift their focus away from their everyday problems. Third group of people, those who live in constant fear and anxiety. Low self-esteem, fear of change, fear of criticism, fear of rejection creates tension. Not knowing what to do with this tension and anxiety can create the false desire of being hungry. Because food can distract our brain from anxiety only for the short period of time, we have to eat more and more in order not to fall into an emotional breakdown or depression. Let's discuss how we use food to deal with negative emotions. 
The first category of emotions is anger and frustration. Anger, rage, aggression, including hidden aggression, irritation, and a desire to destroy, all those emotions represent different forms of anger. When we cannot process those emotions, we want to eat something hard, like chips, crackers, nuts, uh, any type of meat from the bone, like chicken uh, wings, pork, or lamb drips. When we feel anger, we often want to eat raw meat or something chewing like beef jerky. Crispy food like nuts, chips, uh, crackers that can be broken can be associated with the desire to destroy or break something. Chewy food like beef jerky or meat helps us with anger because of chewing motion itself. When we chew things, we are lowering the intensity of our anger by moving our jaws. For example, if your boss is rude to you or raises his voice at you, you cannot respond in a similar way. He's your boss and you want to keep your job. You cannot express your anger and you have to keep it inside. Because of this, you don't release your anger and it will start growing inside of you. At lunchtime, you don't want to eat salad anymore. Now you want to eat a piece of meat like a burger with crunchy chips or french fries. You need something chewy and crunchy so you can at least release your anger in some physical way. Another way to release stress and anger is alcohol. After a stressful day at work, co-workers like to stop by the bar and have a few drinks. This is also a way to relax and release tension that we build up during the day. Let's talk a little bit about alcohol is one of the ways to deal with excess anger. One of the reasons that people drink alcohol is because of their inability to manage anger. Those people can be divided in two groups. Group number one, people with hidden aggression. Hidden aggression is an inability to manage anger. It makes people drink alcohol because alcohol relaxes the body and creates a different type of reality. Alcohol helps to weaken the intensity of a problem. A person who drinks can relax and forget about his stress during the time he's drinking. Second group of people, people with active aggression. Some people who drink alcohol become aggressive and violent. They are holding on to an intense anger inside of them. When sober, they have some control of their feelings, but don't know how to deal with them in a healthy way. They start drinking because alcohol lowers their control level. They don't care anymore about what other people will say or think about them. They don't consider the consequences of their actions. Alcohol helps them to express their anger. An angry drunk person often releases his anger in one of the worst possible ways, by being physically violent and abusive. If you compare overeating with alcoholism as a mechanism to deal with anger, then overeating is considered to be on the milder end of the spectrum from alcoholism. Overeating destroys a person slowly by harming his health. Alcoholism can destroy not only the person himself, but other people around him. On the online course Weight Loss Vaccine, I will teach you how to manage your anger. You will learn healthy ways to release your emotions instead of overeating and suppressing them. If you are interested in this course, please check the link below this video. If you are enjoying this video so far, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. The second category is anxiety and stress. Anxiety is the feeling of fear when there is no direct threat. The fear of the unknown. This is a fear based on assumption. We assume that something bad has happened or might happen and we feel anxiety. For example, let's say a husband does not come home from work on time and does not pick up his phone. He's 30 minutes late and now his wife is going crazy. She is afraid that something bad has happened to him or maybe he is mad at her because of yesterday's conversation. She might even think that he has a mistress. 
And it is possible that all those things are true, or none of them are true. Perhaps he got a flat tire and he used the last 2% of his phone battery to call the car service. Anxiety is in 99% based on assumption of fear. When a person feels anxiety, they want to eat cheese sticks, chocolate, chips, ice cream, yesterday's leftover, fruits. Person can eat anything that they can see. Anxiety is the fear of the unknown. Because we are uncertain about the situation, it makes us uncertain of our food choices as well. Let's get back to the example of the husband and wife. A woman does not know if she should be angry at her husband for not picking up his phone or if she should feel sorry for him and support her husband who is having a tough day. The wife does not know what emotion she is supposed to feel. That is why her body does not know what food to choose to deal with her feelings. So she eats everything that she has in her fridge to lower her anxiety. People who live with constant stress and anxiety have a hard time controlling their appetite. Because they have a mix of emotions at the same time, they want to eat different foods at the same time. The more anxiety they have, the more food they eat. The third category of emotions is boredom and dissatisfaction. Boredom is the feeling that we want something to happen, but we don't know exactly what it is. We want some excitement in our life. We are unsatisfied. This also applies to our appetite. We want to eat something, but we don't know exactly what. The difference between anxiety and boredom is when you eat out of anxiety, you want to eat candy, then you want to eat something crunchy like chips, then you feel like uh, having a piece of yesterday's pizza and you are, cra you are craving all types of food at the same time. When you feel boredom, you may feel that you want to eat some chocolate, but when you start eating it, you say to yourself, no, I don't actually want chocolate, I want crackers. Then you eat some crackers and say, no, it feels weird, I don't want this either. I know, I want a piece of pizza. So nothing can satisfy you when you eat uh, because you feel boredom. What do you think is hidden behind the feeling of boredom? The true emotion that is hidden behind boredom is a feeling of resentment. He does not like any of his available options and he resents those options. Let's look even deeper. The feeling of resentment is actually a form of hidden anger. People who have an internal prohibition that keeps them from expressing their anger often feel boredom instead. To demonstrate this, let me share one example with you. Uh, there is a brother who is five and there is a sister who is four. The boy wants to play with his new toy, but his baby sister wants to play with this toy as well. The mother says you should share your toys with your baby sister. The boy cries, screams, and can even hit his sister who is trying to take his toy away. This is a way that kids express his anger. Now let's assume that the boy is 11 and his sister is 7. The boy is playing a computer game. His sister comes home and she needs to use the computer for the school project. The mother says to the boy, stop playing the game and let your sister work on the computer. At 11, it's not acceptable for the boy to cry or scream. And it's not acceptable to hit his sister. So he gives the computer up and swallows his anger, swallows his disappointment. Now he feels that there is nothing else that he really wants to do. He is bored. But in reality, it's not boredom. In reality, he feels resentment. And the resentment is a form of hidden anger, of hidden aggression. Most of the time, we know that it's bad to show your resentment. Adults are not supposed to express their anger or any other type of negative emotions. This is not socially acceptable. Even admitting out loud that you are bored is considered to be a poor taste. 
We hide our emotions deep inside ourselves and pretend that everything is fine. We don't say how we feel. Most of the time we can recognize that we are bored without knowing that boredom is a form of hidden aggression. So the next time you feel bored, try to eat something crunchy or chewy. If it helps, this is almost certain that you are trying to suppress your inner anger. In the online course Weight Loss Vaccine, we will talk about this mechanism in detail. We will talk in detail how to manage and release your anger and your negative emotions in a healthy way. We will talk about healthy boundaries and about how to identify your emotions. Overeating is one of the easiest way to deal with our emotions. But within time, it brings more problems than solutions. Food helps us to regulate our emotions, but excess food brings diabetes, heart problems, high cholesterol, and other illnesses. You can learn healthy ways to manage your emotions, and I will be happy to teach them to you. Check the link under this video to my online course, Weight Loss Vaccine. If you like this video so far, please let me know by clicking like button and consider subscribing with clicking the notification bell. Also join me on my Facebook and Instagram. You can find all links below this video. The fourth category of emotions is sadness and sorrow. When we feel sad or sorrowful, we want to eat something sweet like candy, cupcakes, ice cream, waffles, chocolate, etc. Sweet food brings us sensations of pleasure and can actually make us feel happy. If you like sweets and have a hard time controlling the amount of chocolate you eat, then it's possible that you need to bring more fun into your life. It means that you may have forgotten to prioritize joy and happiness in your life. Finding more time for joy and happiness is easier said than done. But if you are here, if you are listening to my videos, then it tells me that you want to make improvements and you want to change something in your life and your health. Watch my other four webinars about emotional eating and consider taking weight loss vaccine, my 12 week online healing course. All links are in the video description. The fifth category of emotions that we suppress with food is loneliness and longing. A sign that we feel loneliness or longing is when we have a craving for a specific food. For example, if you have a craving for a specific type of cheese, but instead of eating a reasonable portion, you eat a lot. Maybe you have a craving for a specific type of ice cream and end up eating the whole jar. We feel loneliness when we are longing for a specific person. More precisely, we are longing for how that person makes us feel. We try to feel that absence with food. The food that we eat might or might not be associated with this specific person. But when people are trying to deal with feelings of loneliness, often they have a specific cravings. Uh, McDonald's, hash browns, uh, key lime pie, a certain pastry from your favorite bakery, etc. Longing is a form of loneliness. If a person does not long for a specific person, but in general feels lonely, then most likely this person will be drawn to fatty food or sweets. This type of food brings pleasure, which helps us to suppress loneliness. The sixth category of emotions is fatigue and tiredness. These are the simplest emotions to decode. When we feel tired, we simply have a lack of energy. Food gives us energy. Healthy food consists of complex proteins and carbohydrates. Our body needs time to break down healthy food to release energy. But sugary and fatty food gives us a burst of energy right away. Of course, our body reaches for the fastest and simplest ways to get that energy. That's why when we feel tired, we want to eat chocolate, pizza, burgers or anything fried. 
The problem with the fatty food and sweet food is that we eat more than we need. A small amount of unhealthy food contains a lot of calories, but we don't feel full right away. It takes some time for our body to realize that we ate enough. When we get to that point, usually it's already much more than we need. Our brain cannot really comprehend how a few pieces of chocolate can consist of 300 calories. Pieces are small and 300 is a big number. We don't know exactly how cholesterol affects our body. When we eat unhealthy fatty food, we feel good. Therefore, we don't understand how the fried chicken is clogging our blood vessels. When we eat, we feel good, we feel pleasure, we feel energized. We don't really comprehend the difference between 1500 calories and 2000 calories. We know that those are two different numbers, but we don't know how they really affect our body. We don't realize how burgers can cause harm to our body, because when we eat them, we don't see what's happening inside of us. What we do know for sure is that every bite of a juicy burger brings a pleasure sensation to our mouth and our whole body is relaxed. The seventh category of emotions that I would like to discuss today is self-criticism and guilt. Imagine a child who is being criticized by his parents. When a child feels guilty and is about to cry, they pucker their face. This is similar to our facial expression when we eat salty or sour food. When we want to suppress feelings of guilt, we are more likely drawn to salty and sour food. It can be anything from salty pickles to grapefruits. Another example is people who are drawn to citrusy flavor in their food. Often we are not dealing with the guilt that stems from something that has happened yesterday but rather uh, a feeling of guilt that has been building up inside the person for years. This can be a feeling of guilt that they have not been the best son or daughter, the best husband or wife, or the best parents. Mothers often feel guilt when they compare themselves with other mothers. This inclination to compare ourselves with others and the desire to be the best can bring about a lot of self-criticism and guilt. When we are feeling self-critical, we often eat salty food. It can be as simple as salty nuts or crackers with sea salt. Some people like to add soy sauce to most of their dishes. A desire for salty food might be a sign of self-criticism and internal disapproval of our own actions. People who like to eat salty food often feel that they are not good enough they tend to be perfectionists. People who have high expectations for themselves and don't allow themselves to make mistakes are subconsciously drawn to salty and sour food. You might know a person who likes to add extra salt to their food. Sour food is more related to feelings of guilt, which often comes in a pair with self-criticism. When we criticize ourselves, We think that we are not good enough and we feel guilty. Guilt is also a form of hidden anger. This is a specific type of anger that is directed inwards. A person is angry at himself. He is slowly destroying himself. Let's talk about the difference between outer anger and inner anger. When a person is angry at somebody else, He can express his anger by arguing, by fighting, or even being rude to that person. The destructive power of this type of anger is pointed outward. The feeling of guilt always comes with an internal anger. The person has turned on himself. The destructive force of this type of anger is pointed inward. Sports like running or boxing can be a great way to release the outer anger, but it does not always help with inner anger. When you are angry at somebody else, it's much simpler than being angry toward yourself. If another person did something bad to you, then you have 
the full right to be angry at him. You can reject him. You can avoid him. You can stop answering his phone calls. You can choose to no longer be his friend. You can distance yourself from that person and even completely eliminate him from your life. But when you're angry with yourself, you have no way to create distance. You are stuck with yourself. It is extremely hard to ignore and avoid your own feelings. These feelings are growing inside of you and they're destroying you. One of the easiest ways to deal with these feelings is to suppress them with food. An example, let's say a man who works as a manager in a company has prepared a detailed presentation to attract future clients. He goes and presents his ideas, but because of the time limit, he can't go over the whole presentation and must skip a few pages. Although the presentation was good, he feels that he did not do his best work. He did less than he expected from himself. He criticizes himself for not being able to manage his time better. At the same time, he feels guilty because his company gave him such an important task and in his mind, he did not deliver 100%. If this man does not work on his internal critic, then these negative emotions will continue to grow inside of him. He will always find flaws in his work and feel guilty, anger and low self-esteem. Within time, he starts going to a local bar after work. He ordered a beer, he squeezes a lime into his beer, and he likes his beer with salty nuts and crackers that come complimentary. Let's decode this type of behavior. Salt. Salt is a suppressant for self-criticism. Nuts or crackers are suppressants for anger. A squeezed lime adds a sour flavor to the beer and suppresses feelings of guilt. When he leaves the bar, he feels good, but only temporarily. He was able to deal with his emotions at that specific moment. On the online course Weight Loss Vaccine, you will learn an algorithm for how to work with feelings of guilt, how to work with your inner critic. You will learn how to free yourself from it and how to gain your self-confidence back. Check out the breakdown of this course by clicking the link in the description of this video. If you have any questions about the online course or about the topic of today's webinar, please write them down in the comment section of this video. We all have a wide variety of complex emotions and feelings. If you notice that you eat more than you need, then start paying attention to the type of foods that you crave. In the last example, with the man in the bar, we saw how he was using food to deal with three emotions at once. Usually people never suppress one specific emotion. Our emotions are complex and we are often dealing with several emotions at once. Each of us expresses a dozen emotions during the day. That's why it's important to be aware of your own feelings, to be aware of your own behavioral patterns. And it's extremely important to learn how to express our emotions in a healthy way. On the online course Weight Loss Vaccine, I give you specific exercises for how to identify your own emotions and how to release them in a healthy way. There are a total of 12 weeks in this program. One of them is dedicated to anger management and another to self-criticism. I highly recommend you take this course even if you are not overweight, but having troubles managing your emotions. Most young people have a good metabolism and they might not notice that they eat too much. Once we get older, we start noticing that our body cannot process the same number of calories anymore. We start gaining weight. We want to eat less, but we can't. In my personal experience, most people don't know how to manage their feelings. They don't know how to manage their emotions. They don't notice how they use food to deal with their emotions. They do it subconsciously. Society discourages us from expressing our negative emotions freely, so we have to suppress them. 
Over the years, we store more and more emotion inside of ourselves. At some point, we cannot hold them in anymore. People can experience emotional breakdowns, depression, panic attacks, and anxiety. Oftentimes, they start eating more to deal with their feelings. At some point, they cannot control their appetite. Logically, they can understand that they have eaten a lot, but they still feel hungry. The link to the 12 week online course weight loss vaccine is under this video. If you click on it, you will see the breakdown of the course and all topics that it covers. I want to be clear. This course is not about dieting or exercises. I do not teach about counting calories. This course is about addressing the psychological reasons why people eat more food than they need. This course is about healing your body and mind from emotional eating. I'm sure you have some questions and I will be happy to answer them. Please write your questions down in the comment section. Again, there are total five free webinars about emotional eating and about how we use food to suppress our feelings and emotions. All the links to all free webinars you can find in the video description. Click like if you find this video helpful and consider subscribing to my newsletter so you will be notified about my future webinars and online courses. All links are in the video description. Again, my name is Elena Semenek and this is my YouTube channel Psychology of Happiness, where happiness is the purpose of life. Looking forward to seeing your questions, to seeing your comments and will be happy to see you on my online course weight loss vaccine.